To respect uh, the Anglo-French uh, speaking, I'm going to turn to uh, English to um, uh, address a very serious uh, topic now with my friend Patrick Nicolet, who is going to talk about token economy and maybe to explain what is it, because it's a very sophi sophisticated concept. Patrick? Yep. Thank you, François. Uh, uh, when François and Songnim asked me to join the panel, I uh, said the uh, technology post-crisis. I thought, uh, when was the, uh, the crisis before and what happened? So I went back to 2008, uh, 2008 and uh, just to, as a start, and I picked token economy because Jan 3rd, 2009, uh, the first uh, Bitcoin was launched by supposedly <laughs> Satoshi Nakamoto. We'll never see him. Probably it's a libertarian uh, collective somewhere on the West Coast. I don't know. Nobody knows. Uh, but that was a clear response to the financial crisis. The response of the creation of the Bitcoin and the launch was to say, you uh, messed it all up. Uh, we don't want the middleman. Uh, greed is killing the world and we're going to build something uh, different. Uh, then the economy has recovered, as we all know, and enjoyed it for, for more than 10 years. So, uh, cryptocurrency, Benoit explained it at the beginning, uh, went uh, a, a little down as the, I would say, the equity economy was uh, recovering strong. And then, uh, notably also, from a technology perspective, there was a flow in the initial blockchain because it was designed around something called proof of work. Uh, that is what you might have read, the energy intensive process. Because every time you have a transaction on your blockchain, every participant has to validate this. So you can imagine with the number of transactions, it's uh, hyperventilating, if I may say, uh, from a technology perspective. So a change in the economy, a flow design, in my view at least, uh, not everybody would agree, but uh, uh, in, the, in the architecture. Then came the pandemic. The pandemic has done something, is the ac acceleration of digitization. You've seen it in the, in the way we work today, uh, like it or not, and that has shifted, accelerated something that has started before uh, in this digitization. What does it mean? It's not only the way you work, it's the value is shifting because every time you, you, you instead of having a physical transaction, as uh, uh, Francois was reminding us of the 14% that was just not digital literate, they moved digital, the value moved uh, towards the, the digital. And uh, as a cor cor corollary of this, you, you saw the emergence of this uh, token economy. I, I divide personally into three, can be debatable. Uh, the first part is crypto, it's uh, the history of it. We've discussed it, Benoit made an introduction on this. And we see just the continuation. Uh, you saw the surge in the, in the Bitcoin and other coins uh, value that has attracted a lot of capital and uh, greed remains a big driver. It's highly volatile, even with mechanisms such as a stable coin that can be fiat or algorithmic backed. But then you have an issue uh, rapidly is that uh, it kills the, the ability to have a yield. And uh, I will talk about it later. The, the, the regulator will, will come in and, and uh, this, this, this is one part. The other part is so-called the non-fungible tokens. So I'm sure most of you have read about someone paying $2.5 million for a clip of Michael Jordan of an NBA final uh, while it's available for free on YouTube. Uh, wh why, why pay this price? Because it incorporates, it's a, it's a, it's a, the non-fungible token is a securitization of an asset. It's a digital securitization. So nothing new here, it's just technically it's uh, done differently. And then you have these assets, it incorporates an ownership title and then you believe there will be a market and you can make your money on it. And the third component of this token economy, in my view, is the blockchain. The blockchain is the underlying infrastructure. It has uh, some uh, limitation and some benefit. So I, I, I will focus on uh, rapidly on two and three, uh, because I think we, we are ready to answer question with Benoit on the on the cryptocurrency and the question of money and sovereignty. But the non-fungible token, uh, in the enterprise, and but that's why I believe if there is a market in the enterprise, this is a sustainable development. It goes beyond, so I will give you some examples to which I'm confronted through my companies. Uh, one 
practical application on non-fungible tokens are loyalty programs. You see in e-commerce, there are a lot of different loyalty programs. These loyalty programs have a big problem now in terms of uh, ga uh, gaining or, or maintaining the loyalty of the participants is that they are illiquid. Thinks you have all these miles and you cannot fly. What do I do? Value is zero. So what shall I do? And you, you have a lot of this problem with the loyalty program. So what you can do is package, again, securitization and tokenize. And then, based on this, go on uh, exchanges. Uh, there is one exchange that has been launched during the COVID crisis called BACT. BACT is an IC, Intercontinental Exchange. This is the company behind the New York Stock Exchange. And they've created a trading platform for uh, such token and loyalty programs notably is one of them. The second thing still linked to the... And you have another problem in loyalty program, by the way, if, uh, if you're a distributor and you have franchises, that's an, a case I have right now, you have franchises, uh, very often franchisee one will not accept the loyalty programs of franchisees B, but the client does not know that this is organized this way and they don't understand why they cannot monetize their loyalty point. If I can do a securitization, then I eliminate this problem because everybody has, a, has, a, has the same currency. Uh, another aspect in the enterprise links to commerce also is warranties. Warranties are liabilities for the companies. What do I do with this? This is not a very often uh, well managed. You can the same way, and I have project in this, where you can manage and uh, tokenize uh, your warranties. So. <coughs> That's, that's one aspect linked to the commerce where we see traction. There are real projects going on in the enterprise in that space. Another thing that I've been discussing two weeks ago with a friend, bank in France is a long-term incentive. Today, if I have long-term incentive for my employees, it is about stock options, share grants, and this has a certain cost. The question I had from this bank was, we are uh, renovating our headquarters. Uh, it's a very well-located build, building in Paris, we will add value. Is there a way that we can share this added value with our employees as, uh, as an incentive? And the answer is yes. You can do the tokenization of your real estate. You have the underlying assets that is your real estate. There is an increase of value. Then you, you, of course, your, your building is uh, illiquid by design. No, you cannot. But <laughs> by through the tokenization, I can uh, uh, allow my employees, not everybody in the group, but at least locally, to share some of the added value in, in this. So you can see that there are ways, it's, it's all about unlocking values and making liquid, as always, nothing new here, uh, that is not. And, and there are quite a, a, a number, we see it's emerging, no debate, but there are quite a certain number of cases that... Uh, you, you see in the enterprise space, beyond what you can read in the newspapers right now. Uh, from a blockchain perspective, my second part, blockchain is here. Uh, first, it's a closed system. It's limited to the participants, so it's uh, one thing. It is a distributed database, <coughs> but it provides <coughs> sorry, advantages. One, it's an, it's an automation technology, because once you... Uh, trigger a transaction, there are no middlemen, so that, that's the advantage. A transaction occurs, it's fully automated, the outcome is absolutely predictable, and, uh, uh, and it is, in that case, immutable. Uh, there is one limit in terms of transaction, this is uh, the speed because of the mechanism. We move from an architecture, called, architecture sorry, called proof of work to proof of stake, consumes less energy and allows you to go faster. The use cases, <laughs> Again, in the enterprise, uh, and, and then I come to the state, uh, is the cost of cloud. The cloud is a dominant infrastructure. I encourage you to read an article from Andres Norovitz, the large VC firm in the, on the West Coast, called uh, The Cloud, a Trillion Dollars Paradox. And that shows that uh, your cost of cloud, uh, the cloud grows exponentially, to the point that they removed some of their... Uh, um, software as a service business out of the cloud to bring them back into uh, on-premise uh, infrastructure. I think another use case is, is a circular economy. Uh, we, we, we need to deploy it. We talk and we'll talk about the climate. The, the problem here is that you cannot have big systems to fix something that requires local uh, solution. So how do you provide the technology and then connect your, your different system? And then the last case, we saw it 
without using blockchain, but it will go there, is uh, uh, removing corruption from the distribution of welfare in emerging countries. Uh, that's where the blockchain can intervene because you can't touch the system. Once you've equipped your population, as they've done in India with Adar, you can uh, give access to the system and remove uh, the inefficiency of corruption and basically make sure people uh, get access. So my closing comment on this is that the, I believe for this reason, this is here to, to last. We will see this evolution, transfer of value, uh, the enterprise uh, coming in. Uh, the regulator will rein in because, uh, as Benoit said, uh, money is sovereign and they will come in. And my, my big uh, caveat here is that uh, they don't destroy the entire token economy just because they want to fix uh, their, their, the, the question of uh, sovereignty on, on the money because there are a lot of side benefits and opportunities uh, to, create, uh, to create value in this token economy. That was it. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick, for sharing with us your vision on this sophisticated concept. Very interesting, really.